Hey YouTube, how's it going? Venomman20 here tonight, and tonight I'm going to introduce you to a snake that I've never filmed. I have taken some awesome photos of this little snake, and it's one of my favorites. But we're going to be looking at the Eyelash Viper, or Bothriechus schlegeli. These guys are pretty interesting little arboreal vipers, and you might be thinking to yourself, Venomman, you really don't film arboreal vipers very often. The reason is, it's kind of hard to get them out of the cage. They really like to coil around their tree branches, they really like to climb hooks. So I just try not to stress them out too much. But tonight, we're going to stress this one out just a little bit so you can get to see her because she is beautiful. So anyway, let's check her out. All venomous snake handling in this video is performed by a professional. Please don't try anything you're about to see at home. So on the table, right here in front of me, this is Billy Eyelash. This is the Eyelash Viper. And just like Billy Eilish, this beautiful little eyelash viper is a female. So the scientific name, like I said, is Bothriacus schlegeli as of the filming of this video. They keep bouncing back and forth putting it in Bothrops. I don't think it belongs in Bothrops. I think it belongs in Bothriacus, but you know, that's taxonometry. It's not my thing. Whatever. There is a subspecies to this snake, and that is, I do believe, the blotched pit viper which they look a lot alike and a lot of people think I don't know if it's really a, a subspecies you know a lot of people debate back and forth but that animal is actually Bothrops schlegeli superciliaris I don't know why I can never remember superciliaris for some reason which is weird because it's the same scientific name species name for the lowlands viper but this snake's pretty interesting um, if you're into eyelash vipers uh, they come in a plethora of colors. If you've seen some of my videos, you understand that I've done videos on the uh, variable bush viper from Africa. In my opinion, this should be called the variable bush viper because these snakes are so variable. So this girl is green and she's what they call a Christmas tree face because she has them red dots along her back. And she even has yellow on her sides and some little white blotches. She's drop dead gorgeous. She's one of my favorites. But I also have some yellow ones, some red ones, uh, some orange ones, uh, uh, some more greens that just don't look like her. There's some solid color ones. There's tiger phase. There's just a lot of colors. I've seen pictures of like blue ones. Some of them are just incredible. But, uh, this is one of my favorites. I also have a red one. If you see my, I think it's the zookeeper video, the top five things I wish I knew before I became a zookeeper. That red one is my favorite. She's so pretty, but don't tell her this. Uh, but these guys are pretty interesting. They get a little bit bigger than this. This is an okay size animal. This would probably be a breedable size animal for sure. But uh, yeah, gorgeous tail. Okay, so she's cocking back. So I don't know that I want my fingers this close to her. She's already struck at me a couple times while trying to get her out. And what's interesting about these guys is they will kind of gape like a cotton mouth will. They show you that big old mouth, like, ah, back up, you know. What are you doing? Hmm? She getting angry, are you? They like to climb, and I'm kind of putting her down on a flat surface. She isn't necessarily comfortable right now. That's one reason I don't film a lot of arboreal vipers, is I make them uncomfortable. But uh, just beautiful, beautiful snakes. So if you know much about me, I've been keeping venomous reptiles and exotic venomous for a long time now. This is actually my first exotic venomous. Uh, the reason, because they ride a hook very well. Now, as you see me filming this, you realize she's climbing up and down the hook. So I gotta switch sides of the hook. That's a little, little dangerous. But if you was to have a second hook, you could kind of work her back down the hook while you're uh, while you're holding the right end, instead of giving her the proper hand end. I mean, she don't even have hands, you know, she's gonna grab it, but uh, very beautiful. Now, all in all, they do have a pretty toxic venom. Like if you wanna measure it out drop for drop, it's pretty hot. But with that being said, they have a pretty small venom yield. So if you was to get bit by this snake, in theory, there would be no reason why you would die. I don't wanna get bit by this snake. <laughs> You got a little red spot right on your nose. So you said a lot of people call this the Christmas tree eyelash, so it's probably perfect that I'm filming her around Christmas time. 
and I will show you the other ones. I just didn't want to like overwhelm everybody all at once, you know, uh, by filming just a whole bunch of them. But I can go through and show you like their enclosures or show you, you know, multiple snakes in a video. But uh, this is one of my favorites. I just, I love that pattern. She is drop dead gorgeous. And I would like to produce some of these. I mean, they're easy enough to produce. Produced them by accident before. Pretty sure I can do it again, especially if I'm trying to on purpose. But uh, just a gorgeous little animal. Some coloration. <sighs> you caught me off guard. You've been so calm. Stop. You've been so calm. Calm down. But hopefully she stops being a little moody guy. So a lot of times I'll refer to these as Jack in the Box. And the reason is the second you open up that enclosure, they spring because they're always thinking about food. Now, when you get them when they're a tiny little baby, they don't eat. They don't eat very well at all. It's best to just start them off on frogs, raise them up on frogs until they get a certain size and it's a little bit easier to get them to start eating rodents. But a lot of times you gotta tease feed them. You gotta tap their tail with the rat. It's like, a, or the mouse. It's like, this is a mouse, it's a mouse. You can have it, it's a mouse. You'll like this, I promise you'll like this. Just keep doing it till eventually they'll bite it and hold on. And when they do, leave the room. Just get out of the room. Duck, try to hide from the snake. Is that little bit of movement? She's like, nope, I'm letting go of it. I'm coming after you again. I don't, I need my mouth for defense. <laughs> I'm not gonna eat at a time like this. This is too scary. So they're a real trick to get them started. So a lot of people like, what's the best venomous snake to start with? Well, it really isn't. And it'd be much easier to show you tease feeding than to actually tell you about it, you know? And I might do that someday. It's just, I don't want to waste six hours of your time, you know, so I'll have to do a time lapse or something. Sometimes it takes a while. But uh, once they get bigger, then they won't stop eating, so. But with a lot of venomous snakes, I see this a lot, I really do. A lot of people post pictures and videos of some really, really obese animals. They're like, look how big this one is. And it's fat. And I think like a boa or a python, like some of them retics, I think they can take that weight a lot better. But a lot of times vipers, especially arboreal vipers, when fed a fatty diet like rats and mice, they will get fatty liver disease. This can happen in people and cows and all that. Uh, people ain't necess you don't necessarily die of fatty liver disease as far as I know, but you, you end up having complications, you end up dying from it. Same way with reptiles. A fat reptile is not a healthy reptile. Um, so a lot of times, you know, don't feed these guys once every two weeks, once a month. Don't even really pay attention to it, you know? It's just, if they're acting like they're real hungry, we'll probably feed them. But it's not one of those things like, you know, I'm gonna feed it every week, I'm gonna get it up to size, I'm gonna breed it. The snake's gonna live like five years, 10 years. They're not gonna live very long if you feed them real hard. This is not something that you can do what they call power feeding. That's not gonna work. <laughs> and some people have also debated that, stop, that these guys eat a lot of birds and stuff in the wild, uh, at least that's speculated as far as I know they do. Um, so a lot of people wonder if the rodent diet actually is too fatty for them. And I have seen a lot of old animals in captivity end up getting fat deposits and tumory looking deals. And you can say that with every species, but I find it more typical in montane rattlesnakes and little arboreal vipers like this. But uh, it's a little pit viper, if I didn't mention that. Um, it's got the little heat-seeking pits up there. Going to work, striking at me multiple times, being a little grumpy pants. But she is beautiful, aren't you? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put her up. And like I said, I have some more eyelash vipers to show you. I'll show you, you know, a couple along, whatever. Might show you some enclosures and stuff too, how I keep them. It's easy enough, it works. I'm not saying you should go out and get them. That ain't what I'm saying. I'm just saying that they're a pretty decent animal to keep as far as venomous snakes go. But uh, as you see, they can be a little temperamental like all of them. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like it. It really helps the channel out. Uh, make sure you subscribe because this is one of the least cool things I have to show you. And she's pretty amazing if I do say so myself. But I work with some amazing animals, so I'd love for you to check them out on the daily if you could. But uh, show all your friends and you all have a wonderful night.